Chapter Twenty Nine of Jerusalem to Revelations, a Quartet of Spiritual Experience, by William Blake and others. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Tony Addison. The Chapters of Coming Forth by Day. Chapters One Hundred and one hundred and twenty-nine from the papyrus of nu vignette a boat wherein stand the deities isis thoth capera and shu and the deceased sailing on a stream the vignette in the saite recension shows the deceased poling along a boat wherein are ra and the benu bird and in front of the boat stand the emblem of the east the god osiris and the tet that is the emblem of osiris and of stability the four short lines of text written over the boat read the overseer of the palace the chancellor in chief new triumphant raiseth up the tet and establisheth the buckle and he saileth with ra into any place that he pleaseth text the book of making perfect the coup and of causing him to go forth into the boat of ra along with those who are in his following the overseer at the palace the chancellor in chief new triumphant saith I have brought the divine Bennu to the east, and Osiris to the city of Tattoo. I have opened the treasure-houses of the god Hap. I have made clean the roads of the Dis, and I have drawn the god Sekeri along upon his sledge. The mighty and divine lady hath made me strong at her hour. I have praised and glorified the Dis, and I have united myself unto the divine ape who sing at the dawn, and I am a divine being among them. I have made myself a counterpart of the goddess Isis, and her power, Ku, hath made me strong. I have tied up the rope, I have driven back Apep, I have made him to walk backwards. Ra hath stretched out to me both his hands, and his mariners have not repulsed me. My strength is the strength of the Uchat, and the strength of the Uchat is my strength. If the overseer of the house, the chancellor in chief new, triumphant, be separated from the boat of Ra, then shall he, that is, Ra, be separated from the egg and from the abtu fish. Rubric This chapter shall be recited over the design which hath been drawn above, and it shall be written upon papyrus, which hath not been written upon, with ink made of grains of green, mixed with anti-water, and the papyrus shall be placed on the breast of the deceased. It shall not enter into, that is, touch, his members. If this be done for any deceased person, he shall go forth into the boat of Ra, in the course of the day every day, and the god Thoth shall take account of him, as he cometh forth from, and goeth in the course of the day every day, regularly and continually, into the boat of Ra, as a perfect coup. And he shall set up the jet, and shall establish the buckle, and shall sail about with Ra, into any place he wisheth. In the Sa'it recension, a chapter one hundred is repeated as one hundred and twenty-nine, and both texts have the same vignette. The rubric of chapter one hundred and twenty-nine is, however, fuller than that of chapter one hundred, and it may conveniently be divided into two parts, the first of which refers to the picture which is ordered to be written upon a piece of new papyrus, and the second to the chapter itself. The originals of both 
are to be found in the variant texts of the rubric of the chapter published by Naville. Chapter 101 From the Papyrus of Nu Vignette In the Papyrus of Nu, this chapter has no vignette. In the Sa'it recension, the deceased is seen poling along a boat, wherein are the god Ra and the Benu bird. Text The chapter of protecting the boat of Ra. O thou that cleavest the water, as thou comest forth from the stream, and dost sit upon thy place in thy boat, sit thou upon thy place in thy boat, as thou goest forth to thy station of yesterday, and do thou join the Osiris, the overseer of the palace, the chancellor-in-chief, new triumphant, the perfect coup unto thy mariners, and let thy strength be his strength. Hail, Ra, in thy name of Ra, if thou dost pass by the eye of seven cubits, which hath a pupil of three cubits, then, verily, do thou strengthen the Osiris, new triumphant, the perfect coup, and let him be among thy mariners, and let thy strength be his strength. Hail, Ra, in thy name of Ra, if thou dost pass by those who are overturned in death, then, verily, do thou make the Osiris, new triumphant, the perfect soul, to stand upon his feet, and may thy strength be his strength. Hail, Ra, in thy name of Ra, if the hidden things of the underworld are opened unto thee, and thou dost gratify the heart of the cycle of thy gods, then, verily, do thou grant joy of heart unto the Chancellor-in-Chief, Nu, triumphant, and let thy strength be his strength. Thy members, O Ra, are established by this chapter. Rubric This chapter shall be recited over a bandlet of the fine linen of kings, upon which it hath been written with ante, which shall be laid upon the neck of the perfect coup on the day of the burial. If this amulet be laid upon his neck, he shall do everything which he desireth to do, even like the gods, and he shall join himself unto the followers of Horus, and he shall be established as a star, face to face with Septet, Sothus, and his corruptible body shall be as a god, along with his kinfolk for ever, and the goddess Menket shall make plants to germinate upon his body, and the majesty of the god Thoth lovingly shall make the light to rest upon his corruptible body at will, even as he did for the majesty of the king of the north and of the south, the god Osiris Triumphant. Chapter 102 From the Papyrus of Nu Vignette The boat of Ra, with the god seated therein, and holding a paddle, before him kneels the goddess Isis, and behind him the deceased. Sometimes Ra is accompanied by the gods Thoth and Kepera, and sometimes by Anubis alone. In the Sa'it recension, the deceased is kneeling before Ra at a table of offerings. Text The chapter of going into the boat of Ra the Chancellor-in-Chief, Nu, triumphant, saith, Hail, thou great God, who art in thy boat, bring thou me into thy boat, I have come forward to thy steps, let me be the director of thy journeyings, and let me be among those who belong to thee, and who are among the stars which never rest, the things which are an abomination unto thee, and the things which are an abomination unto me, I will not eat. That which is an abomination unto me, that which is an abomination unto me, is filth, and I will not eat thereof. But sepulchral offerings and holy food will I eat, and I shall not be overthrown thereby. I will not draw nigh unto filth with my hands, and I will not walk thereon with my sandals, because my bread is made of white barley, and my ale is made of red barley. And behold, the sectet boat and the artet boat, 
have brought these things and have laid the gifts of the lands upon the altar of the souls of anu hymns of praise be to thee o er aret s as thou travellest through heaven let there be food for thee o dweller in the city of tenny this and when the gods gather together let me not suffer harm i myself have come and i have delivered the god from the things which have been inflicted upon him and from the grievous sickness of the body of the arm and of the leg i have come and i have spit upon the body i have bound up the arm and i have made the leg to walk i have entered the boat and i sail round about by the command of ra chapter one hundred and three from the papyrus of nu vignette the goddess hathor having a disc and horns upon her head and a sceptre in her left hand behind her stands the deceased text the chapter of being with the goddess hathor the chancellor in chief nu triumphant saith i am the pure traveller behold as are he behold as are he let me be among those who follow the goddess hathor chapter one hundred and four from the papyrus of nebsene vignette two great gods seated on thrones facing each other on the ground between them sits the deceased in the sa'it recension the deceased is seated on a low pedestal before three gods text the chapter of sitting among the great gods behold nebsene who saith i sit among the great gods and i have made a way for myself through the house of the sectet boat and behold the mantis hath brought me to see the great gods who dwell in the underworld and i shall be triumphant before them for i am pure chapter one hundred and five from the papyrus of nu vignette the deceased standing before a car on a pedestal with his right hand he pours out a libation and with his left he makes an offering of incense text the chapter of making offerings to the car in the underworld the overseer of the palace the chancellor in chief new triumphant saith homage to thee o my car who art my period of life grant thou that i may come before thee and let me rise up like the sun and let me be strong and let me have my soul and let me gain the mastery over mine enemies for i have brought to thee an offering of incense and i have made myself pure therewith and i will purify that which issueth from thee therewith the evil things which i have spoken and the hateful transgressions which i have committed lay thou not upon me for i am the mother of emerald amulet which belongeth unto the neck of ra and which hath been placed there by those who dwell in the double horizon that is the eastern and western parts of the sky their vigour is my vigour their vigour is my vigour my car is like unto their cars and the tachafu food of my car is like unto the tachafu food of their cars o thou who liftest up the scales and who exultest right and truth to the nostrils of ra this day let not my head fall away from me for behold am i not the eye which looketh upon thee and am i not the ear which hearkeneth unto thee for behold am i not the bull of those who have fallen down in death and have not sepulchral meals been made for me and are not those who live in the heights or according to another reading those who are chiefs of newt for me o oh, grant thou that i may go forward by thee for i even i am pure and i have made osiris to triumph over his enemies chapter one hundred and six 
from the papyrus of new vignette a table of offerings in the sa'it recension the deceased is making offerings to the god Ptah. text the chapter of giving sepulchral meals unto the osiris nu triumphant in het Ptah ka that is memphis in the underworld the chancellor in chief nu triumphant saith hail great god thou lord of tachafu food hail great god thou prince of the celestial habitations which supply bread for the god Ptah, hail mighty one who dwellest in the great house grant ye unto me bread grant ye unto me ale and let me cleanse myself by means of the haunch and by the offerings of cakes hail thou divine boat of seket aru let these cakes be brought to me by thy stream even as thy divine father the mighty one passed thereon in the divine bark chapter one hundred and seven there is no equivalent for this chapter in the papyri containing the theban recension in the sa'it recension this chapter is called the chapter of going into and of coming out from the gate of the gods of the west of being among the followers of ra and of knowing the souls of the west and the vignette represents the deceased standing with both hands raised in adoration before ra sebek hathor and a serpent who rest on the slope of a mountain the text is actually the first line and a half of chapter a hundred and nine which is entitled the chapter of knowing the souls of the east chapter one hundred and eight from the papyrus of nu vignette the deities tamu sebek and hathor seated text the chapter of knowing the souls of the west the chancellor in chief nu triumphant saith now the mountain of bacchao that is the mountain of the sunrise whereupon this heaven supports itself is situated in the eastern part of heaven and it hath dimensions of three hundred kept that is thirty thousand cubits in length and one hundred and fifty kept that is fifteen thousand cubits in breadth sebek the lord of bacchao dwelleth to the east of the mountain and his temple is on the earth there there is a serpent on the brow of that mountain and he measureth thirty cubits in length the first eight cubits of his length are covered with flints and with shining metal plates the osiris new triumphant knoweth the name of this serpent which dwelleth on his hill dweller in his fire is his name now after ra hath stood still he inclineth his eyes towards him and a stoppage of the boat of Ra taketh place, and a mighty sleep cometh upon him that is in the boat, and he gulpeth down seven cubits of the great waters. Thereby he maketh Suti to depart, having the harpoon of iron in him, and thereby he is caused to throw up everything which he hath eaten, and thereby is set put into his place of restraint. And then i recite before him the enchantment saying get thee back to the sky for that which is in my hand is ready i stand up in thy place of restraint the boat advanceth taking heed to the way thy head is covered up while i sail on and turn back thy steps i am the man who covereth thy head and who poureth cold water upon thy palm i have strength and i am strong i am the divine one who is mighty in enchantments namely the son of nut and my splendour hath therefore been delivered unto me who then is this venerable ku who advanceth 
walking upon his belly and upon his tail and upon the joints of his back verily it is i myself who do walk over thee and thy strength is in my power i am he who lifteth up strength and i have come and i have become master of the serpents of ra when he setteth in my sights at eventide i go round about heaven but thou art bettered with betters which thing was ordained for thee formerly when ra set in life in his horizon i even i know how to guide the matters whereby the serpent apep is driven back and i know the divine souls of the west that is to say tem and sebek the lord of baku and hathor the lady of the evening chapter one hundred and nine from the papyrus of nu vignette the god heru kuti harmachis seated before him is a spotted calf behind which stands the deceased with both hands raised in adoration of the god above is the morning star elsewhere the deceased is seen standing with both hands raised in adoration before three seated ibis-headed deities in the sa'it recension the vignette is quite different the god ra hamakis hawk-headed and wearing a disc which is encircled by a serpent is seated in a boat above the disc is the emblem of air and he holds on his knees the emblem of life before him in the boat is a calf above which is a star and behind him stands the deceased the boat is about to sail between two sycamore trees in front of which stands the deceased with both hands raised in adoration text the chapter of knowing the souls of the east the chancellor in chief new triumphant saith i even i know the eastern gate of heaven now its southern part is at the lake of Karu, and its northern part is at the canal of the geese where out ra cometh with winds which make him to advance i am he who is concerned with the tackle which is in the divine bark i am the sailor who seizeth not in the boat of ra i even i know the two sycamores of turquoise between which Ra showeth himself when he strideth forward over the supports of Shu towards the gate of the Lord of the East, through which Ra cometh forth. I, even I, know the sectet Aru of Ra, the walls of which are of iron. The height of the wheat therein is five cubits, of the ears thereof two cubits, and of the stalks thereof three cubits. The barley therein is in height seven cubits, the ears thereof are three cubits, and the stalks thereof are four cubits. And behold, the coos, each one of whom therein is nine cubits in height, reap it near the divine souls of the east. I, even I, know the divine souls of the east that is to say heru kuti harmachis and the calf of the goddess kera and the morning star daily a divine city hath been built for me i know it and i know the name thereof sekut aru is its name end of chapter twenty nine chapter thirty of jerusalem to revelations a quartet of spiritual experience by william blake and others this librivox recording is in the public domain recording by tony addison the chapters of coming forth by day chapter one hundred and ten from the papyrus of nebseni 
vignette the seket hetepet or fields of peace commonly called the elysian fields surrounded and intersected by streams the divisions contain the following a nebseni the scribe and artist of the temple of ptah with his arms hanging by his sides entering the elysian fields b the scribe nebseni making an offering of incense to the great company of the gods c a nebseni seated in a boat paddling above the boat are three symbols for city d the deceased addressing a bearded mummied figure e three pools or lakes called erti heta and ketket respectively f nebseni reaping in seket hetepet g nebseni grasping the benu bird which is perched upon a stand in front are three cars and three coos h nebseni seated and smelling a flower the text reads thousands of all good and pure things to the car of nebseni i a table of offerings j four pools or lakes called nebd tawi wakha ka and hetep k nebseni ploughing with oxen by the side of a stream which is one thousand measures in length and the width of which cannot be said in it there are neither fish nor worms l nebseni ploughing with oxen on an island the length of which is the length of heaven m a division shaped like a bowl in which is inscribed the birthplace of the god of the city ken kenet neb m an island whereon are four gods and a flight of steps the legend reads the great company of the gods who are in seket heta o the boat chetetetfet with eight oars four at the bows and four at the stern floating at the end of a canal in it is a flight of steps the place where it lies is called the domain of net p two pools the names of which are illegible the vignette in the papyrus of ani has some interesting variants and may be thus described ani making an offering before a hair-headed god a snake-headed god and a bull-headed god behind him stands thoth holding his reed and pallet ani paddling a boat ani addressing a hawk before which are a table of offerings three ovals and the legend being at peace in the field of peace and having air for the nostrils ani reaping corn ani driving the oxen which tread out the corn ani addressing or adoring a benu bird perched on a stand ani seated holding the carap sceptre a heap of red and a heap of white corn three cars and three coos which are perhaps to be read the food of the coos and three pools ani ploughing a field near a stream which contains neither fish nor serpents the birthplace of the god of the city an island on which is a flight of steps a region 
called the place of the coos, who are seven cubits high. The wheat is three cubits high, and it is the sar who, who have become perfect to reap it. The region are Shep, the god who dwelleth therein, being Unnefer, a boat with eight oars, lying at the end of a canal, and a boat floating on a canal. The name of the first boat is Behetu Techesa, and the name of the second Techafau. In the papyrus of Nebsene are two scenes, one on each side of Seket Hetepet, or the Elysian Fields. In the first, Nebsene stands with both hands raised in adoration, and adores the company of the gods who dwell in Seket Hetep, saying, Homage to you, O ye lords of food. I have come in peace to your field, to receive to Chephau food. Grant ye that I may come to the great God daily, and grant that I may attain to the offerings, that is to say, to the cakes and ale, and oxen, and ducks, and bread, which are offered unto his car. The three short lines of hieroglyphics in front of Nebsene read, Nebsene, the lord of reverence, the scribe and artist, in the temples of the south and of the north, ascribeth praise to the company of the gods, and adoreth the great god. In the second scene, Nebsene is standing upright, and a youth is pouring a libation over him. At the same time, another youth is bringing to him an offering of raiment. The text above him reads, May the god Osiris and all the company of the gods who dwell in Seketetep grant offerings of cakes and ale and oxen and ducks and bread and all good things and linen garments and incense each day and an offering on the altar each day, and the receiving of cakes of various kinds, and milk, and wine, and to Chephau food, and the following of the god at his coming forth during his festivals of Rastau, along with the favoured ones of the great god, to the car of the scribe Nebsene, etc. Here begin the chapters of Seket Hetepet, and the chapters of Coming Forth by Day, of Going Into, and of Coming Out from the Underworld, of Coming to Seket Aru, of Being in Seket Hetepet, the Mighty Land, the Lady of Winds, of Having Power There, of Becoming a Ku There, of Ploughing There, of Reaping There, of eating there, of drinking there, of making love there, and of doing everything, even as a man doeth upon earth. Behold, the scribe and artist of the temple of Ptah, Neb Sene, who saith, Set hath taken possession of Horus, who looked with the two eyes upon the building round Seket Hetep, but I have unfettered Horus, and taken him from Set, and Set hath opened the ways of the two eyes which are in heaven. Set hath cast his moisture to the winds upon the soul that hath his day, or his eye, and who dwelleth in the city of Mert, and he hath delivered the interior of the body of Horus from the gods of Akef. Behold me now, for I make this mighty boat to travel over the lake of Hetep, and I brought it away with might from the palace of Shu. The domain of his stars groweth young, and reneweth its former strength. I have brought the boat into the lakes thereof, so that I may come forth into the cities thereof, 
and I have sailed into their divine city Heta. And behold, it is because I, even I, am at peace with his seasons, and with his guidance, and with his territory, and with the company of the gods who are his firstborn. He maketh the two divine fighters, that is, Horus and Set, to be at peace with those who watch over the living ones, whom he hath created in fair form, and he bringeth peace with him. He maketh the two divine fighters to be at peace with those who watch over them. He cutteth off the hair from the divine fighters, he driveth away storm from the helpless, and he keepeth away harm from the coos. Let me gain dominion within that field, for I know it, and I have sailed among its lakes, so that I might come into its cities. My mouth is strong, and I am equipped with weapons to use against the coos. Let them not have dominion over me. Let me be rewarded with thy fields, O thou god Hetep. That which is thy wish shalt thou do, O lord of the winds. May I become a coo therein, may I eat therein, may I drink therein, may I plough therein, may I reap therein, may I fight therein, may I make love therein, may my words be mighty therein, may I never be in a state of servitude therein, but may I be in authority therein. Thou hast made strong the mouth and the throat of the god Heta. Ketetbu is its name. He established upon the watery supports of the god Shu, and is linked unto the pleasant things of Ra. He is the divider of years, he is hidden of mouth, his mouth is silent, that which he uttereth is secret, he fulfilleth eternity, and taketh possession of everlastingness of existence, as Heta, the Lord Heta. The god Horus maketh himself to be strong, like unto the hawk, which is one thousand cubits in length, and two thousand cubits in width in life. He hath equipments with him, and he journeyeth on, and cometh where the seat of his heart wisheth in the pools thereof, and in the cities thereof. He was begotten in the birth-chamber of the god of the city. He hath offerings made unto him of the food of the god of the city. He performeth that which it is meet to do therein, and the union thereof in the matter of everything of the birth-chamber of the divine city. When he setteth in life like crystal, he performeth everything therein, and these things are like unto the things which are done in the lake of double fire, wherein there is none that rejoiceth, and wherein are all manner of evil things. The god Heta goeth in, and cometh out, and goeth backwards in that field, which gathereth together all manner of things for the birth-chamber of the god of the city. When he setteth in life like crystal, he performeth all manner of things therein, which are like unto the things which are done in the lake of double fire, wherein there is none that rejoiceth, and wherein are no evil things whatsoever. Let me live with the god Heta, clothed and not despoiled by the lords of the north, and may the lords of divine things bring food unto me. May he make me to go forward, and may I come forth, and may he bring my power to me there, and may I receive it, and may my equipment be from the god Heta. May I gain the mastery over the great and mighty word which is in my body, in this my place, and by it I will remember, and I will forget. Let me go forward on my journey, and let me plough. 
I am at peace in the divine city, and I know the waters, cities, gnomes, and lakes, which are in Sekhetheta. I exist therein, I am strong therein, I become a cool therein, I eat therein, I sow seed therein, I reap the harvest therein, I plough therein, I make love therein, I am at peace with the god Heta therein. Behold, I scatter seed therein, I sail about among its lakes, and I come forward to the cities thereof. O divine Heta! Behold, my mouth is equipped with my horns for teeth. Grant me an overflowing supply of the food whereon the cars and coos live. I have passed the judgment of Shu upon him that knoweth him, so that I may go forth to the cities thereof, and may sail about among its lakes, and may walk about in Sekhetheta. And behold, Ra is in heaven, and behold, the god Heta is its double offering. I have come onward to its land, I have put on my girdle, I have come forth, so that the gifts which are about to be given unto me may be given. I have made gladness for myself, I have laid hold upon my strength, which the god Heta hath greatly increased for me. O Yunen M. Heta, I have entered into thee, and my soul followeth after me, and my divine food is upon both my hands, O lady of the two lands, who establishest my word, whereby I remember and forget. I would live without injury, without any injury being done unto me. O oh, grant to me, O oh, do thou grant to me joy of heart. Make thou me to be at peace. Bind thou up my sinews and muscles, and make me to receive the air. O oh, Unen M. Hetep, thou lady of the winds, I have entered into thee, and I have opened, that is, shown, my head. Ra falleth asleep, but I am awake, and there is the goddess Hast, at the gate of heaven by night. Obstacles have been set before me, but I have gathered together what he hath omitted. I am in my city, O Nut Ert. I have entered into thee, and I have counted my harvest, and I go forward to Uak. I am the bull, enveloped in turquoise, the lord of the field of the bull, the lord of the divine speech of the goddess Septet. Sothis, at her hours. O Uak, I have entered into thee, I have eaten my bread, I have gotten the mastery over choice pieces of the flesh of oxen and of feathered fowl, and the birds of Shu have been given unto me. I follow after the gods, and I come after the divine cars. O Chefet, I have entered into thee, I array myself in apparel, and I gird myself with the sar garment of Ra. Now, behold, he is in heaven, and those who dwell therein follow Ra, and I follow Ra in heaven. O Unen M. Hetep, Lord of the two lands, I have entered into thee, and I have plunged into the lakes of Chesert. Behold me, for all filth hath departed from me, the great God groweth therein, and behold, I have found food therein, I have snared feathered fowl, and I feed upon the finest of them, O Ken Ken Tet, I have entered into thee, and I have seen the Osiris, my father, and I have gazed upon my mother, and I have made love, I have caught the worms and serpents, and I am delivered, and I know the name of the God, who is opposite to the goddess Chesert, and who hath straight hair, and is equipped with two horns. He reapeth, and I both plough and reap. O Hast, I have entered into thee, I have driven back those who would come to the turquoise sky, and I have followed the winds of the company of the gods. The great god hath given my head unto me, and he who hath bound on me my head is the mighty one, who hath turquoise eyes, namely, Aryan Ab'af, 
that is, he doeth as he pleaseth. O oh, Uzet, I have come into thee at the head of the house wherein divine food is brought for me. O oh, Smam, I have come into thee. My heart watcheth, my head is equipped with the white crown. I am led into celestial regions, and I make to flourish terrestrial objects, and there is joy of heart for the bull, and for celestial beings, and for the company of the gods. I am the god who is the bull, the lord of the gods, as he goeth forth from the turquoise sky. O divine gnome of wheat and barley, I have come into thee, I have come forward to thee, and I have taken up that which followeth me, namely, the best of the libations of the company of the gods. I have tied up my boat in the celestial lakes, I have lifted up the post at which to anchor, I have recited the prescribed words with my voice, and I have ascribed praises unto the gods who dwell in Sekhet Hetep. Chapter 111 in the Theban recension, this chapter has not as yet been found. In the Sa'ite recension, it is called the chapter of knowing the souls of Pei, but an examination of the text shows that it is identical with that of chapter 108. It has no vignette. Chapter 112 From the Papyrus of Nu Vignette The Gods Horus, hawk-headed, Mestha, and harpy seated. Text. Another chapter of knowing the souls of Pei. The overseer of the palace, the chancellor-in-chief, knew triumphant, saith, Hail, Kat, who dwellest in Kat, in Anpet, and in the gnome of Kat. Hail, ye goddesses of the chase, who dwell in the city of Pei, ye celestial lands, ye stars, and ye divine beings who give cakes and ale, do ye know for what reason the city of Pei hath been given unto Horus? I, even I, know, though ye know it not. Behold, Ra gave the city unto him in return for the injury in his eye, for which cause Ra said to Horus, Let me see what is coming to pass in thine eye, and forthwith he looked thereat. Then Ra said to Horus, Look at that black pig, and he looked, and straightway an injury was done unto his eye, namely, a mighty storm took place. Then said Horus unto Ra, Verily, my eye seems as if it were an eye upon which Suti had inflicted a blow, and thus saying he ate his heart. Then said Ra to those gods, Place ye him in his chamber, and he shall do well. Now the black pig was Suti, who had transformed himself into a black pig, and he it was who had aimed the blow of fire, which was in the eye of Horus. Then said Ra unto those gods, The pig is an abominable thing unto Horus. Oh, but he shall do well, although the pig is an abomination unto him. Then the company of the gods, who were among the divine followers of Horus, when he existed in the form of his own child, said, Let sacrifices be made to the gods of his bulls, and of his goats, and of his pigs. Now the father of Mesthi, Hapi, Tuamata, and Keb Senuk, is Horus, and their mother is Isis. Then said Horus to Ram, Give me two divine brethren in the city of Pe, and two divine brethren in the city of Nekn, who have sprung from my body, and who shall be with me in the guise of everlasting judges. Then shall the earth blossom, and thunder clouds and rain be blotted out. And the name of Horus became Herhwach that is, prince of his emerald stone. I, even I, know the souls of Pei, namely Horus, Mesti, and Hapi. 
Chapter 113 From the Papyrus of Nu Text The Chapter of Knowing the Souls of Nekem The Overseer of the Palace, the Chancellor-in-Chief, Nu, triumphant, saith, I know the hidden things of the city of Nekem, that is to say, the things which the mother of Horus did for him, and how she made her voice to go forth over the waters, saying, Speak ye unto me concerning the judgment which is upon me, and show me the path behind you, and let me discover it. And Hara said, This son of Isis hath perished, and what the mother of Horus did for him, when she cried out, saying, Sebek, the lord of the papyrus swamp shall be brought to us. And Sebek fished for them, and he found them, and the mother of Horus made them to grow in the places to which they belonged. Then Sebek, the lord of his papyrus swamp, said, I went, and I found the place where they had passed with my fingers on the edge of the waters, and I enclosed them in my net, and strong was that net. And Ra said, So then, there are fish with the god Sebek, and he hath found the hands and arms of Horus for him in the land of fish, and that land became the land of the city of Remu, that is, fish. And Ra said, A land of the pool, a land of the pool to this net. Then were the hands of Horus brought to him at the uncovering of his face, at the festivals of the month and half-month, in the land of Remu. And Ra said, I give the city of Neken to Horus, for the habitation of his two arms and hands, and his face shall be uncovered before his two hands and arms in the city of Neken. And I give into his power the slaughtered beings who are in them at the festivals of the month and half-month. Then Horus said, Let me carry off Tuamautef and Kebzenuf, and let them watch over my body, and if they are allowed to be there, then shall they be subservient to the god of the city of Nekem. And Ra said, It shall be granted unto thee there, and in the city of Senket, that is, Sati, and there shall be done for them what hath been done for those who dwell in the city of Nekem, and verily they shall be with thee. And Horus said, They have been with thee, and now they shall be with me, and shall hearken unto the god Suti, when he calleth upon the souls of Nekem. Grant to me that I, even I, may pass on to the souls of Nekem, and that I may unloose the bonds of Horus. I, even I, know the souls of Nekem, namely Horus, Tuamatev, and Kebsenuf. Chapter 114 From the Papyrus of Nebsene Vignette Three ibis-headed gods In the Sa'ite recension the deceased is standing with both hands raised in adoration before the god Thoth, Sa, and Tem. Text The Chapter of Knowing the Souls of Kemenu, Hermopolis. The goddess Mart is carried by the arm at the shining of the goddess Neith in the city of Menchat, and at the shining of the eye when it is weighed. I am carried over by it, and I know what it bringeth from the city of Kesi, and I will neither declare it unto men, nor tell it unto the gods. I have come, being the envoy of Ra, to establish Mart upon the arm at the shining of Neith, in the city of Menchat, and to adjudge the eye to him that shall scrutinize it. I have come as a power through the knowledge of the souls of Kemenu, Hermopolis, who love to know what ye love. I know Mart, which hath germinated, and hath become strong, and hath been judged, and I have joy in passing judgment upon the things which are to be judged. Homage to you, O ye souls of Kimenu, I, 
even I, know the things which are unknown on the festivals of the month and half-month. Ra knoweth the hidden things of the night, and know ye that it is Thoth who hath made me to have knowledge. Homage to you, O ye souls of Kemenu, since I know you each day. Chapter 115 From the Papyrus of Nu Vignette In the Papyrus of Nu this chapter has no vignette. In the Sa'ite recension the deceased is standing with both hands raised in adoration before the gods Ra, Shu, and Tefnut. Text The chapter of coming forth from heaven and of making a way through the Amentet and of knowing the souls of Anu, Heliopolis. The Chancellor in chief Nu, triumphant, saith, I have passed the day since yesterday among the great divine beings, and I have come into being along with the god Kepara. My face is uncovered before the eye, the only one, and the orbit of the night hath been opened. I am a divine being among you. I know the souls of Anu. Shall not the god Uama pass over it as he journeyeth forward with vigour? Have I not overcome, and have I not spoken to the gods? Behold, he that is the heir of Anu hath been destroyed. I, even I, know for what reason was made the lock of hair of the man. Ra spake unto the god Amihaf, and an injury was done unto his mouth, that is to say, he was wounded in that mouth. And Ra spake unto the god Amihaf, saying, O heir of men, receive thy harpoon, and the harpoon house came into being. Behold, O God, Amihaf, two divine brethren have come into being, that is to say, Senti Ra came into being, and Setem and Sief came into being, and his hand stayed not, and he made his form into that of a woman with a lock of hair, which became the divine lock in Anu, and which became the strong and mighty one in this temple and it became the strong one of Anu, and it became the heir of the heir of Urmat F, that is, the mighty one of the two eyes, and it became before him the god Urma of Anu. I know the souls of Anu, namely Ra, Shu, and Tepnut. Chapter 116 From the Papyrus of Nu Vignette the deceased, adoring three ibis-headed gods. In the Sa'ite recension, the deceased is standing, with both hands raised in adoration before the gods Thoth, Sa, and Tem. Text. Another chapter of Knowing the Souls of Kemenu, Hermopolis. The Chancellor-in-Chief, Nu, triumphant, saith, The goddess Neith shineth in Machat, and the goddess Mart is carried by the arm of him who eateth the eye, and who is its divine judge, and the Sem priest carrieth me over upon it. I will not declare it unto men, and I will not tell it unto the gods. I will not declare it unto men, and I will not tell it unto the gods. I have entered in being an ignorant man, and I have seen the hidden things. Homage to ye, O ye gods who dwell in Kemenu, Ye know me, even as I know the goddess Neith, and ye give to the eye the growth which endureth. There is joy to me at the judgment of the things which are to be judged. I, even I, know the souls of Anu. They are great at the festival of the month, and are little at the festival of the half-month. They are Thoth, the hidden one, and Sa, and Tem. Rubric if this chapter be known by the deceased, offal shall be an abomination unto him, and he shall not drink filthy water. Chapter 117 From the Papyrus of Nu Vignette The deceased, 
holding a staff in his left hand, about to walk up one side of a hill of the horizon. In the Sa'it recension, the god Anubis is leading the deceased to a shrine which is set on a hill. Text. The chapter of receiving paths were on to walk in Restau. The chancellor-in-chief, new, triumphant, saith, The paths which are above me lead to Restau. I am he who is girt about with his girdle, and who cometh forth from the goddess of the Euroret crown. I have come, and I have established things in Abtu Abydos, and I have opened out paths in Restau. The god Osiris hath eased my pains. I am he who maketh the waters to come into being, and who setteth his throne thereon, and who maketh his path through the funeral valley and through the great lake. I have made my path, and indeed I am Osiris. Osiris was victorious over his enemies, and the Osiris Nebket is victorious over his enemies. He hath become as one of yourselves, O ye gods. His protector is the Lord of eternity. He walketh even as ye walk, he standeth even as ye stand, he sitteth even as ye sit, and he talketh even as ye talk, in the presence of the great God, the Lord of Amentet. Chapter 118 From the Papyrus of Nu Vignette The deceased, holding a staff in his left hand, in the Sayite recension, this chapter has no vignette. Text. The chapter of coming forth from Restau, the Chancellor-in-Chief, new, triumphant, saith, I was born in Restau, and splendour hath been given unto me by those who dwell in their spiritual bodies, Savu, in the habitation where libations are made unto Osiris. The divine ministers who are in Restau shall receive me, when Osiris is led into the twofold funeral region of Osiris. Oh, let me be a divine being, whom they shall lead into the twofold funeral region of Osiris. Chapter 119 From the Papyrus of Nu Vignette The deceased, adoring the god Osiris, who stands in a shrine. In the Sa'it recension, the deceased is walking away from a shrine which is set upon a hill. Text. The chapter of coming forth from Rasta. The Chancellor-in-Chief, Nu, triumphant, saith, I am the great God who maketh his light. I have come to thee, O Osiris, and I offer praise unto thee. I am pure from the issues which are carried away from thee. Thy name is made in Restau, and thy power is in Abtu Abydos. Thou art raised up then, O Osiris, and thou goest round about through heaven with Ra, and thou lookest upon the generations of men. O thou one who circlest thou Ra, behold, verily, I have said unto thee, O Osiris, I am the spiritual body of the God, and I say, let it come to pass, that I shall never be repulsed before thee, O Osiris. The following is the chapter in a fuller form. The chapter of knowing the name of Osiris, and of entering into, and of going out from Restau, in all the forms wherein he willeth to come forth. The scribe Mesem Nater, triumphant, saith, I am the great name, who maketh his light. I have come to thee, O Osiris, and I offer praise unto thee. I am pure from the issues which are carried away from thee. Thy name hath been made in Restau, when it hath fallen therein. Homage to thee, O Osiris, in thy strength and in thy power. Thou hast obtained the mastery in Restau. Thou art raised up, O Osiris, in thy might and in thy power. Thou art raised up, O Osiris, and thy might is in Restau, and thy power is in Abtu Abydos. Thou goest round about through heaven, and thou sailest before Ra, and thou lookest upon the generations of men. O thou being who circlest thou Ra, behold, verily, I have said unto thee, O Osiris, 
I am the spiritual body of the God, and I say, let it come to pass that I shall never be repulsed before thee, O Osiris. End of chapter 30chapter thirty one of jerusalem to revelations a quartet of spiritual experience by william blake and others this librivox recording is in the public domain a recording by tony addison the chapters of coming forth by day chapter one hundred and twenty vignette this chapter is without a vignette both in the theban and saite recensions text in the saite recension this chapter is given twice chapter one hundred and twenty one vignette this chapter is without a vignette both in the Theban and Sa'ite recensions. A text. In the Sa'ite recension, this chapter is given twice. A chapter 122. From the Papyrus of Nu. Vignette. The Papyrus of Nu is the only document containing the Theban recension which is known at present to give a text of this chapter, but it is without a vignette. In the Sa'it recension, the deceased is bowing before a shrine which is set upon a hill. Text The chapter of going in after coming forth from the underworld the overseer of the palace the chancellor in chief new triumphant saith open unto me who then art thou whither goest thou what is thy name i am one of you assembler of souls is the name of my boat making the hair to stand on end is the name of the oars watchful one is the name of its bows evil is it is the name of the rudder steering straight for the middle is the name of the machabet so likewise the boat is a type of my sailing onward to the pool let there be given unto me vessels of milk together with cakes and loaves of bread and cups of drink and pieces of meat in the temple of anpu or as others say grant thou me these things holy let it be so done unto me that i may enter in like a hawk and that i may come forth like the benu bird and like the morning star let me make my path so that i may go in peace into the beautiful amentet and let the lake of osiris be mine let me make my path and let me enter in and let me adore Osiris, the Lord of Life. Chapter 123 or 139 From the Papyrus of Nu Vignette The deceased, or his soul, standing before a palace or shrine, in the Sa'it recension, this chapter has no vignette. Text The chapter of entering into the great house. The overseer of the palace, the chancellor-in-chief, new triumphant, saith, Homage to thee, O Thoth, I am Thoth, who have waved the two divine fighters, that is, Horus and Set. I have destroyed their warfare, and I have diminished their waitings. I have delivered the Atu fish in his turning back, and I have performed that 
which thou didst order concerning him, and afterwards I lay down within my eye. I am he who hath been without opposition. I have come to thou look upon me in the temple of Nem Hra, or Uhem Hra. I give commands in the words of the divine aged ones, and moreover I guide for thee the lesser deities. Chapter 124 From the Papyrus of Nu Vignette The Deceased Adoring Mesta Harpy Tuamata and Keb Seno Text The Chapter of Going into the Presence of the Divine Sovereign Princes of Osiris The Overseer of the Palace the Chancellor-in-Chief, Nu, a triumphant, saith, My soul hath built for me a habitation in the city of Tatu. I sow seed in the city of Pe, and I plough my field with my labourers, and for this reason my palm-tree is like Amsu. That which is an abomination unto me, that which is an abomination unto me, I shall not eat. That which is an abomination unto me, that which is an abomination unto me is filth. I shall not eat thereof. By sepulchral meals and food I shall not be destroyed. The abominable thing I shall not take into my hands. I shall not walk upon it in my sandals, because my cakes are made of white grain, and my ale is made of red grain. And behold, the sectet boat and the martet boat bring them to me, and I eat thereof under the branches of the trees, the beautiful arms of which I know. Oh, let splendour be prepared for me with the white crown which is lifted up upon me by the Uriah goddesses. Hail, thou guardian of the divine doors of the god Sehetep Tawi, that is, he who maketh the world to be at peace. Bring thou to me that of which they make sepulchral meals. Grant thou that I may lift up the branches, May the God of Light open to me his arms, and may the company of the gods keep silence, whilst the denizens of heaven talk with the Chancellor in chief Nu triumphant. I am the leader of the hearts of the gods which strengthen me, and I am a mighty one among the divine beings. If any god or any goddess shall come forth against me, he shall be judged by the ancestors of the year who live upon hearts, and who make cakes for me, and Osiris shall devour him that is coming forth from Ab to Abydos. He shall be judged by the ancestors of Ra, and he shall be judged by the God of Light, who clotheth heaven among the divine princes. I shall have bread in my mouth at stated seasons, and I shall enter in before the gods Ahio. He shall speak with me, and I shall speak with the followers of the gods. I shall speak with the disc, and I shall speak with the denizens of heaven. I shall put the terror of myself into the blackness of night, which is in the goddess Me-Earth, who is near him that dwelleth in night. And behold, I shall be there with Osiris. My condition of completeness shall be his condition of completeness, among the divine princes. I shall speak unto him with the words of men, and he shall repeat unto me the words of the gods. A coup who is equipped with power shall come. I am a coup who is equipped with power. I am equipped with the power of all the coups, being the form of the sahu, that is, spiritual bodies, of Anu, Tatu, Sutan Henen, Aptu, Apu, and Senu. The Osiris, Auf Ankh, is victorious over every god and every goddess who are hidden in Neter Kertet. Chapter 125 The 125th chapter consists of three parts the introduction, the negative confession, 
and a concluding text. The introduction was said when the deceased arrived at the hall of double Marty. The negative confession was recited by him before the forty-two gods who were in this hall, and the concluding text when he came into the underworld. The Introduction From the Papyrus of Ani Vignette The god Osiris, bearded and wearing the white crown, stands in a shrine, the roof of which is surmounted by a hawk's head and by Uraii. He holds the usual emblems of sovereignty and dominion. Behind him is the goddess Isis, and before him, standing upon a lotus flower, are the four children of Horus, Mesta, Harpy, Toamata, and Kebsenu. Vignette Ani and his wife Thuthu, standing with hands raised in adoration to Osiris before a temple of offerings. Text The chapter of entering into the hall of double Ma'ati, a hymn of praise to Osiris, the governor of Amentet. Osiris, the scribe Ani, triumphant, saith, I have come, and I have drawn nigh to see thy beauties. My hands are raised in adoration of thy name, right and truth. I came, and I drew nigh unto the place where the acacia tree groweth not, where the tree thick with leaves existeth not and where the ground yieldeth neither herb nor grass. Then I entered into the hidden place, and I spake with the god set, and my protector advanced to me, and his face was clothed or covered, and he fell upon the hidden things. He entered into the temple of Osiris, and he looked upon the hidden things which were therein, and the sovereign chiefs of the pylons were in the form of coups, and the god Anpu spake to those who were on both sides of him with the speech of a man as he came from Tamera. He knoweth our paths and our cities. I make offerings, and I smell the odour of him as if he were one among you, and I say unto him, I am Osiris, the scribe Ani, triumphant in peace, triumphant. I have come, and I have drawn nigh to see the great gods, and I feed upon the offerings which are among their food. I have been to the borders of the territory of Barneptetet, that is, the soul, the lord of Tatu, or Osiris, and he hath caused me to come forth like a Benu bird, and to utter words. I have been in the water of the stream, and I have made offerings of incense. I have guided myself to the Shantat tree of the divine children. I have been in Abu, or Abu, that is, Elephantine, in the temple of the goddess Satet. I have submerged the boat of my enemies, whilst I myself have sailed over the lake in the Neshmet boat. I have seen the Saliu, that is, the spiritual bodies, in the city of Kemua. I have been in the city of Tatu, and I have brought myself to silence therein. I have caused the god to have the mastery over his two feet. I have been in the temple of Teptuef, that is, he that is on his hill, or Anubis, and I have seen him that is lord of the divine temple. I have entered into the temple of Osiris, and I have arrayed myself in the apparel of him that is therein. I have entered into Rastab, and I have seen the hidden things which are therein. I was shrouded therein, 
but I found a way for myself. I have gone into the city of an Arat F, that is, the place where nothing groweth, and I covered my nakedness with the garments which were therein. There was given unto me the army unguent, such as women use, along with the powder of human beings. Verily, Sut hath spoken unto me the things which concern himself, and I said, Let thy weighing be in us. The majesty of the god Ampu saith, Knowest thou the name of this door, so as to declare it unto me? And Osiris the scribe Ani, triumphant in peace, triumphant, saith, Destroyer of the god Shu is the name of this door. The majesty of the god Ampu saith, Knowest thou the name of the upper leaf and of the lower leaf? Lord of Mart upon his two feet is the name of the upper leaf, and Lord of twofold strength, the subduer of cattle, is the name of the lower leaf. The majesty of the god Ampu saith, since thou knowest, pass on, O Osiris, the scribe, the teller of the divine offerings of all the gods of Thebes. Ani, triumphant, the lord of reverence. The Introduction From the Papyrus of Nu Vignette The deceased and his wife, standing with both hands raised in adoration, Text. The following shall be said when the overseer of the palace, the chancellor-in-chief, Nu, triumphant, cometh forth into the hall of double Marty, so that he may be separated from every sin which he hath done, and may behold the faces of the gods. The Osiris, Nu, triumphant, saith, Homage to thee, O great God, Thou Lord of double Marti, I have come to thee, O my Lord, and I have brought myself hither, that I may behold thy beauties. I know thee, and I know thy name, and I know the names of the two and forty gods who exist with thee in this hall of double Marti, who live as warders of sinners, and who feed upon their blood on the day when the lives of men are taken into account in the presence of the god Unnefer. In truth, recti menti neb marti, that is, twin sisters with two eyes, ladies of double marti, is thy name. In truth, I have come to thee, and I have brought mart, that is, right and truth, to thee, and I have destroyed wickedness for thee. I have not done evil to mankind, I have not oppressed the members of my family. I have not wrought evil in the place of right and truth. I have had no knowledge of worthless men. I have not wrought evil. I have not made to be the first consideration of each day that excessive labour should be performed for me. I have not brought forward my name for exaltation to honours. I have not ill-treated servants. I have not thought scorn of God. I have not defrauded the oppressed one of his property. I have not done that which is an abomination unto the gods. I have not caused harm to be done to the servant by his chief. I have not caused pain. I have made no man to suffer hunger. I have made no one to weep. I have done no murder. I have not given the order for murder to be done for me. I have not inflicted pain upon mankind. I have not defrauded the temples of their oblations. I have not purloined the cakes of the gods. I have not carried off the cakes offered to the Cletes. I have not committed fornication. I have not polluted myself in the holy places of the god of my city, nor diminished from the bushel. I have neither added to nor filched away land. I have not encroached upon the fields of others. I have not added to the weights of the scales to cheat the seller. 
I have not misread the pointer of the scales to cheat the buyer. I have not carried away the milk from the mouths of children. I have not driven away the cattle which were upon their pastures. I have not snared the feathered fowl of the preserves of the gods. I have not caught fish with bait made of fish of their kind. I have not turned back the water at the time when it should flow. I have not cut a cutting in a canal of running water. I have not extinguished a fire or light when it should burn. I have not violated the times of offering the chosen meat offerings. I have not driven off the cattle from the property of the gods. I have not repulsed God in his manifestations. I am pure, I am pure, I am pure, I am pure. My purity is the purity of that great Benu, which is in the city of Sutenhenen, Heracleopolis. For behold, I am the nose of the God of the winds, who maketh all mankind to live on the day when the eye, Uchat, of Ra is full in Anu, Heliopolis, at the end of the second month of the season Pert, that is, the season of growing, in the presence of the divine Lord of this earth. I have seen the eye of Ra when it was full in Anu. Therefore let not evil befall me in this land, and in this hall of double Marti, because I, even I, know the names of these gods who are therein, and who are the followers of the great god. The Negative Confession From the Papyrus of Nebsani Vignette the hall of double Marti, that is to say, the hall of the goddesses Isis and Nephthys, who symbolize right and truth. Herein are seated or stand forty-two gods, to each of whom the deceased must address a prescribed negative statement. At each end is one half of a folding door, one having the name of Neb Mat. Heri Tep Retui Ep, and the other of Neb Peti Kezu Men Menet. On the centre of the roof, which has a cornice of Uriai, typifying divinity and feathers, symbolic of Mart, is a seated deity, painted bluish green, with hands extended, the right over the eye of Horus, and the left over a pool. At the end of the hall are four small vignettes, in which are depicted 1. The Ma'ati goddesses, each seated upon a throne, and holding a sceptre in her right hand, and the emblem of life in her left. 2 the deceased arrayed in white standing before the god osiris with both hands raised in adoration three a balance with the heart symbolizing the conscience of the deceased in one scale and the feather emblematic of right and truth in the other the god anubis is testing the tongue of the balance and close by stands the monster Amet. 4. Thoth, ibis-headed, seated upon a pylon-shaped pedestal, painting a large feather of mart. Text. The scribe, Nebsene, triumphant, saith, 1. Hail, Thou who strides along, who comest forth from Anu Heliopolis, I have not done iniquity. 2. Hail, thou who art embraced by flame, 
who comest forth from Ke'aba, I have not robbed with violence. 3. Hail, thou divine nose, Fenty, who comest forth from Kemenu, Hermopolis, I have not done violence to any man. 4. Hail, thou who eatest shades, who comest forth from the place where the Nile riseth, I have not committed theft. 5. Hail, Nehahau, who comest forth from Rastau, I have not slain man or woman. 6. Hail, thou double lion god, who comest forth from heaven, I have not made light the bushel. 7. Hail, thou whose two eyes are like flint, who comest forth from Sechem, Latopolis, I have not acted deceitfully. 8. Hail, thou flame, who comest forth as thou goest back, I have not purloined the things which belong unto God. 9. Hail, thou crusher of bones, who comest forth from Suten Hanan, Heracleopolis, I have not uttered falsehood. 10. Hail, thou who makest the flame to wax strong, who comest forth from Hetkapata, Memphis, I have not carried away food. 11. Hail, Kerti, that is, the two sources of the Nile, who come forth from Amentet, I have not uttered evil words. 12. Hail, thou whose teeth shine, who comest forth from Tashe, that is, the Fayum, I have attacked no man. 13. Hail, thou who dost consume blood, who comest forth from the house of slaughter, I have not killed the beasts which are the property of God. 14. Hail, thou who dost consume the entrails, who comest forth from the marble chamber, I have not acted deceitfully. 15. Hail, thou god of right and truth, who comest forth from the city of double Marti, I have not laid waste the lands which have been ploughed. 16. Hail, thou who goest backwards, who comest forth from the city of Bast, Bubastis, I have never pried into matters to make mischief. 17. Hail, Arti, who comest forth from Anu, Heliopolis, I have not set my mouth in motion against any man. 18. Hail, thou who art doubly evil, who comest forth from the gnome of Atti, I have not given way to wrath concerning myself without a cause. 19. Hail, thou serpent to our empty, who comest forth from the house of slaughter, I have not defiled the wife of a man. 20. Hail, thou who lookest upon what is brought to him, who comest forth from the temple of Amsu, I have not committed any sin against purity. 21. Hail, chief of the divine princes, who comest forth from the city of Nahatu, I have not struck fear into any man. 22. Hail, Kemu, that is, destroyer, who comest forth from the lake of Kawi, I have not encroached upon sacred times and seasons. 23. Hail, thou who orderest speech, who comest forth from Urit, I have not been a man of anger. 24. Hail, thou child, who comest forth from the lake of Hekat, I have not made myself deaf to the words of right and truth. 25. Hail, thou disposer of speech, who comest forth from the city of Unas, I have not stirred up strife. 26. Hail, Basti, who comest forth from the secret city, I have made no man to weep. 27. Hail, Thou whose face is turned backwards, who comest forth from the dwelling, I have not committed acts of impurity 
neither have i lain with men twenty eight hail leg of fire who comest forth from ahekhu i have not eaten my heart twenty nine hail kenemti who comest forth from the city of kenemet i have abused no man thirty hail thou who bringest thine offering who comest forth from the city of sao sais i have not acted with violence thirty one hail thou god of faces who comest forth from the city of chafet i have not judged hastily thirty two hail thou who givest knowledge who comest forth from unth i have not and i have not taken vengeance upon the god thirty three hail thou lord of two horns who comest forth from satyo i have not multiplied my speech over much thirty four hail nefertem who comest forth from hetka memphis i have not acted with deceit and i have not worked wickedness thirty five hail tem sap who comest forth from tatu i have not uttered curses on the king thirty six hail thou whose heart doth labour who comest forth from the city of tepti i have not fouled water thirty seven hail abi of the water who comest forth from nu i have not made haughty my voice thirty eight hail thou who givest commands to mankind who comest forth from sao i have not cursed the god thirty nine hail neheb nefert who comest forth from the lake of nefeb i have not behaved with insolence forty hail neheb cow who comest forth from thy city i have not sought for distinctions forty one hail art thou whose head is holy who comest forth from thy habitations i have not increased my wealth except with such things as are justly mine own possessions forty two hail thou who bringest thine own arm who comest forth from our underworld i have not thought scorn of the god who is in my city address to the gods of the underworld from the papyrus of nu vignette the deceased standing with both hands raised in adoration text then shall the heart which is righteous and sinless say the overseer of the palace the chancellor in chief knew triumphant saith homage to you o ye god who dwell in the hall of double marty i even i know you and i know your names let me not fall under your knives of slaughter and bring ye not forward my wickedness unto the god in whose train you are and let not evil hap come upon me by your means or oh, declare ye me right and true in the presence of nib heir to chair because i have done that which is right and true in tamera egypt i have not cursed god and let not evil hap come upon me through the king who dwelleth in my day homage to you o ye gods who dwell in the hall of double maati who are without evil in your bodies and who live upon right and truth and who feed yourselves upon right and truth in the presence of the god horus who dwelleth in his divine death deliver ye me from the god baba who feedeth upon the entrails of the mighty ones upon the day of the great judgment o grant ye that i may come to you for i have not committed faults i have not sinned 
I have not done evil, I have not borne false witness. Therefore let nothing evil be done unto me. I live upon right and truth, and I feed upon right and truth. I have performed the commandments of men, as well as the things whereat are gratified the gods. I have made the god to be at peace with me by doing that which is his will. I have given bread to the hungry man, and water to the thirsty man, and apparel to the naked man, and a boat to the shipwrecked mariner. I have made holy offerings to the gods, and sepulchral meals to the crews. Be ye them my deliverers, be ye them my protectors, and make ye not accusation against me in the presence of the great God. I am clean of mouth and clean of hands. Therefore let it be said unto me by those who shall behold me, Come in peace, come in peace, for I have heard that mighty word which the spiritual bodies, Sahu, spake unto the cat in the house of Haptre. I have been made to give evidence before the god hra f ha f that is, he whose face is behind him, and he hath given a decision concerning me. I have seen the things over which the Percy tree spreadeth its branches within the restaurant. I am he who hath offered up prayers to the gods, and who knoweth their persons. I have come, and I have advanced to make the declaration of right and truth, and to set the balance upon what supporteth it, within the region of Uka. Hail, thou who art exalted upon thy standard, the lord of the Atefu crown, whose name is proclaimed as lord of the winds, deliver thou me from thy divine messengers, who cause dire deeds to happen, and do cause calamities to come into being, and who are without coverings for their faces, for I have done that which is right and true for the lord of right and truth. I have purified myself and my breast with libations, and my hinder parts with the things which make clean, and my inner parts have been in the pool of right and truth. There is no single member of mine which lack of the right and truth. I have been purified in the pool of the south, and I have rested in the northern city, which is in the field of the grasshoppers, wherein the divine sailors of Ra bathe at the second hour of the night, and at the third hour of the day. And the heart of the gods are gratified after they have passed through it, whether it be by night or whether it be by day, and they say unto me, Let thyself come forward, and they say unto me, Who then art thou? And they say unto me, What is thy name? I am he who is equipped under the flowers, and I am the dweller in his olive tree is my name. And they say unto me straightway, Pass thou on. And I passed on by the city to the north of the olive tree. What then didst thou see there? The leg and the thigh. What then didst thou say unto them? Let me see rejoicings in these lands of the ten ku. And what did they give unto thee? A flame of fire, and a tablet or sceptre of crystal. What then didst thou do therewith? I buried them by the furrow of Man'at, as things for the night. What then didst thou find by the furrow of Mart? A sceptre of flint, the name of which is giver of winds. What then didst thou do? To the flame of fire and the tablet or sceptre of crystal after thou hadst buried them i uttered words over them in the furrow and i dug them out therefrom i extinguished the fire 
and I broke the tablet or sceptre, and I created a pool of water. Come, then, they say, and enter in through the door of this hall of double Ma'ati, for thou knowest us. We will not let thee enter in through us, say the bolts of the door, unless thou tellest us our name. Tongue of the balance of the place of right and truth is your name. I will not let thee enter in by me, saith the right lintel of the door, unless thou tellest me my name. Balance of the support of right and truth is thy name. I will not let thee enter in by me, saith the left lintel of the door, unless thou tellest me my name. Balance of wine is thy name. I will not let thee pass over me, saith the threshold of the door, unless thou tellest me my name. Ox of the god Seb is thy name. I will not open unto thee, saith the fastening of this door, unless thou tellest me my name. Flesh of his mother is thy name. I will not open unto thee, saith the socket of the fastening of the door, unless thou tellest me my name. Divine Eye of the God Sebek, the Lord of Bako, is thy name. I will not open unto thee, and I will not let thee enter in by me, saith the guardian of the leaf of this door, unless thou tellest me my name. Elbow of the God Shu, when he placeth himself to protect Osiris, is thy name. We will not let thee enter in by us, say the posts of this door, unless thou tellest us our names. Children of the Uriai goddesses is your name. Thou knowest us, they say, pass on therefore by us. I will not let thee tread upon me, saith the floor of the hall of double Ma'ati, because I am silent, and I am holy, and because I do not know the names of thy two feet, wherewith thou wouldst walk upon me. Traveller of the god Kas is the name of my right foot, and Staff of the goddess Hathor is the name of my left foot. Thou knowest me, it saith, pass on therefore over me, I will not make mention of thee, saith the guardian of the door of this hall of double Ma'ati, unless thou tellest me my name. Discerner of hearts and searcher of the reins is thy name. Now will I make mention of thee to the god. But who is the god that dwelleth in his hour? Speak thou it, that is, his name. Mau Ta'awi, that is, he who keepeth the record of the two lands, is his name. Who then is Mau Ta'awi? He is Thoth. Come, saith Thoth, but why hast thou come? I have come, and I press forward, that I may be mentioned. What now? is thy condition. I, even I, am purified from evil things, and I am protected from the baleful deeds of those who live in their days, and I am not among them. Now will I make mention of thee to the God. Tell me now, who is he whose heaven is of fire, whose walls are surmounted by living Uriai, and the floor of whose house is a stream of water, who is he, I say? It is Osiris. Come forward, then. Verily, thou shalt be mentioned to him. Thy cake shall come from the eye of Ra, and thine ale shall come from the eye of Ra, and the sepulchral meals which shall be brought to thee upon earth shall come from the eye of Ra. This hath been decreed for the Osiris, the overseer of the palace, the chancellor-in-chief, new, triumphant. Rubric The Making 
of the representation of what shall happen in this hall of double marty this chapter shall be said by the deceased after he hath been cleansed and purified and when he is arrayed in apparel and is shod with white leather sandals and his eyes have been painted with antimony and his body hath been anointed with unguent of asti and when he offereth oxen and feathered fowl and incense and cakes and ale and garden herbs and behold thou shalt draw a representation of this in colour upon a new tile moulded from earth upon which neither a pig nor other animals have trodden and if thou doest this book upon it in writing the deceased shall flourish and his children shall flourish and his name shall never fall into oblivion and he shall be as one who filleth that is satisfieth the heart of the king and of his princes and bread and cakes and sweetmeats and wine and pieces of flesh shall be given unto him upon the altar of the great god and he shall not be turned back at any door in amentet and he shall be brought in along with the kings of upper and lower egypt and he shall be in the train of osiris continually and regularly for ever end of chapter thirty one